What's going on guys, it's The Hunter Project here, welcome back to my channel. Today I will be bringing you a 2021 beginner guide for new and returning Monster Hunter World players. This will be specifically aimed at new players, but of course if there is a returning player that has kind of lost all the information they knew about Monster Hunter World and wants to just quickly jump into a quick beginner guide to get them back into the game, this can definitely work for that as well. If you do enjoy the video and or get anything useful out of this video, a like would be extremely appreciated and subscribe for a lot more Monster Hunter content. And without wasting any more time, let's jump right into the video. So as usual, with any Monster Hunter title, you will begin with character customization. And to avoid you stressing more than necessary, the features that you will be able to change later on that you don't have to worry too much about are hairstyle and colour, eyebrows colour, facial hair, makeup and base clothing. You will also be able to redesign your character if you do have a free appearance change ticket, which you can only use once and then if you want more of them, you will have to buy them. Uh, if you are on PC, you could probably get a mod that will allow you to change it for free, but if you're on one of the consoles, like Xbox One or PS4, then unfortunately you will only have one chance to change your character fully, and then the rest you will have to pay for. So Starting World will launch you into Astera in the New World, and this will be the first hub world of the game and it can be quite overwhelming at first in size and NPCs but there are only a few you will truly need to remember. The only people and things you need to interact with are as follows. So from the entrance you will have the quest board where you can accept quests and an item box where you can change things that you want to bring to the quest as well as changing your equipment. You'll also have a provision shop right in front of the entrance slightly to the right where you can buy resources like herbs, potions, bombs and ammunition to name a few and this stock will increase in variety over the course of the story. To the left of him you will have the resource centre where you can register bounties which are like little quests that you can have active which you can get extra resources from completing. You can also manage investigations from here and investigations are basically like normal quests but with special conditions. These special conditions could be things such as less players being able to join the quest so it may be capped to one or two players. It could also be time conditions where basically you're given 30 or 15 minutes instead of the regular 50 minutes and it could also even be where you have less lives so you only can have one faint, maybe three faints and in some cases they will allow you to have additional faints on top of the regular quest limit and sometimes I have gotten investigations that gave me five faints, but those usually will have the worst rewards at the end, like usually like a triple bronze rather than a triple gold or even like five golds, which you could come across way later in the game. So basically, investigations will be giving the player additional rewards, varying in rarity and quantity. So it's usually what players will go to when they're trying to farm for materials for when you are crafting or upgrading gear. And as you would expect, rarer materials are more likely in gold. Investigations will have a limited number of attempts as well, but you will find yourself getting a lot of these, so don't be too worried about that. And then finally, this NPC will also allow you to complete deliveries given to you by other NPCs throughout the story to gain additional features and resources. The most important ones being any that refer to expanding anything for you, such as your item box, or the farm, which brings us on to our next NPC to the left of the resource centre, the farm. The farm, aka the chief botanist, is where you can farm your different type of herbs, insects and mushrooms, and this will expand as you complete more deliveries and quests, which you will receive via the story progression, and it will tell you which quests and deliveries go towards expanding the farm. And you can easily find guides online to see what quests and deliveries you will need to do to expand the farm, which I would highly recommend as it is extremely useful as like a, a, just a thing to help you out throughout the game. To start with farming, you probably do want to start with honey, as this will be one of the most useful items in the game, as it will lead to your mega potions, which is arguably the most important healing item of the game. And this will be the potion that you will be using for the most part of your entire journey from start to finish as they're e easy to craft and you can hold 10 of them and they heal a decent chunk of your health bar so obviously that's extremely useful in itself and also do note that each harvest of your farming will complete for every quest you do so do keep this in mind when you start with this process. Other NPCs will include characters like the commander but they will be highlighted only when you need to talk to them for story reasons, so you don't have to worry about them too much. 
To the right of the farm and behind the resource center, you will have the melder. And here is where you can convert excess items that you have into more useful items, decorations and gear. But this will come into play later in the story and will be explained to you so you can ignore this for now. And then heading over to the other side of the hub, you will find a stairway which will lead to the armory. And next to the stairway, you will also find a lift which you can take to various levels of this world hub to save a bit of time. So the armory will consist of two NPCs. The one to the left will buy and sell armor and for the most part can be ignored unless you have Iceborne and you want to skip the base game then here is where you can buy your defender armor if you didn't select it in the character customization. The main NPC that you will need here is going to be the one in the center as soon as you enter and this is where you can forge and upgrade your equipment. And forging and buying are completely different. Buying is where you just use money to get the armor or weapon and usually will be very weak in terms of where you are in the story and for the most part this will be the case the entire time and then at end game it's going to be an extremely vast difference and then forging is where you give in money alongside monster parts to create weapons and armor and this is generally what you will be doing for like 99% of the game. And you will also be able to do the same for your palico here, customize your bowgun by adding maybe like a recoil um, mod or a suppressor and the game will tell you what each of these attachments do. For example of course the recoil mod will just make it so your, your bowgun has less recoil after each shot. Later on your journey you'll also see the option to augment equipment and this will come from tempered monsters. The materials you get from them can be used to augment your weapons and this could lead to something like an attack boost, an affinity boost or even a straight up health regeneration feature to your weapon. In addition to this you also have charms and this is basically a piece of equipment that you can use to buff a specific armor skill and these have to be crafted just like armor and weapons. These can be upgraded and they will provide in the end a very solid increase to the given skill that you decide to target. You will also be able to manage your kinsex here and this is also self-explanatory. Um, there are probably a lot of guides on YouTube about how kinsex work so you definitely probably want to look into that if you use insect glaive. If insect glaive isn't your weapon of choice then you could probably leave this for the time being. And then you can also set decorations here and change your equipment. Decorations in Monster Hunter World are additional armor skills that you can slot into your armor either to add new skills or to buff the existing ones. Armor sets will come with an intrinsic range of skills and of course as you progress through the game from low rank to higher rank to possibly master rank if you buy Iceborne they will increase in terms of their effectiveness and how many decoration slots you have. You may also notice that there are two armor sets for each monster and this will obviously be replicated throughout each of the specific ranks so you will have for example a Kulu Yaku low rank set, a Kulu Yaku high rank set and a Kulu Yaku master rank set and you will need to get like quite a bit of the materials of the armor set in order for it to be unlocked and these go by the terms alpha and beta. So the alpha set will have very little or no decoration slots but it will have quite a few intrinsic skills to the armor set whereas the beta set will have less skills intrinsically but with a lot more decoration slots for more player customization. Before end game, you can freely just use alpha sets for the most part and just make four armor sets as that will probably be the most effective way to just quickly get through the game safely. But if you do want to, you can mix and match different pieces of armor. So adding on to the other NPC to the left, this is where as the story progresses, you can pick up mantle quests and mantles will be explained to you naturally as you progress but to sum them up shortly they are just cloaks that your character can temporarily equip during a hunt to give them a boost in some way and they will have varying regen times as well as usage times so definitely keep that in mind. And then finally we have the canteen where you can eat food before a hunt to give you stat increases and this is recommended before every single hunt as it is extremely useful. The game will give you a preset meal that will be very useful, it will give you a nice boost in stamina as well as health and as you progress throughout the game, as with most of the things in this beginner's guide, it will get more effective. So definitely keep in mind of all your optional quests as that is where you can find the quests to expand your farm as well as the quests to expand the canteen. And then obviously later you can look into 
eating more varied meals for specific increases such as attack up large and there are a few decent videos already on YouTube about this topic so definitely give those a look when you get into this system. So these are all the NPCs that you all need to know about to progress nicely without being too confused and you may have noticed quite a lot of the quest boards around from what I mentioned from the entrance of the Astera hub and they are all exactly the same but they're just spread out to help convenience depending on whichever area you are at. There are two locations that you do want to be aware of, the first being the multiplayer hub which will be at the top of the Astera hub world and it is very easy to navigate here and then the other is the training area. As you'd expect the multiplayer hub is where you go to play multiplayer with either your friends or any people that you meet in your lobby and the training area is extremely important and this is where you can practice attacking on dummies. This will be very useful for you to find your preferred weapon type of the 14 and don't worry about picking the quote unquote best weapon as every weapon in the game is viable to a professional degree as well so if you are like you're looking into speedrunning in the future every single weapon is viable in those regards so any weapon you do pick will have the potential to be extremely powerful when used correctly. Some weapons may be a little harder to use than others like the charge blade and insect glaives but practice makes perfect so just choose the weapon that feels best for you. As for quests in Monster Hunter World they are quite streamlined which is very good at least for the story quests they are very streamlined and the optional quests do branch off a tiny bit but for the most part as long as you're paying a tiny bit of attention to what important characters say when they are needed to be interacted with it should avoid any issues of you not knowing what to do and I think overall World does do a pretty good job in keeping the player in the loop especially compared to all the titles. So I won't be covering any quest basics in this video like the base camp and scout flies as those will be covered during the game's tutorial in itself but here are some little tips that can help you on your journey. So starting Monster Hunter World will give you the option to the defender armor and weapon set and this is put in the game to allow the player to breeze through the base game and get to the Iceborne expansion as soon as possible. If you are looking to play at Iceborne specifically then I'd recommend using this armor set, but if you do just want to play world's base game, then avoid this armor set and play through the game without these weapons and armor, as the defender set will make this game extremely easy, and that does take a lot of Monster Hunter's flare away. And of course, if you use it up until Iceborne, it will become irrelevant as soon as you hit Iceborne, and that's where the actual experience will begin, that most Monster Hunter games will give you. But that's just something to bear in mind of course feel free to use it if you want if you want to have this like obviously power fantasy throughout the game but it will be extremely easy compared to what the developers intended for the base game to be and um, but I definitely recommend using it if you are playing to Iceborne as Iceborne's an, ex an amazing expansion and you won't be missing out on anything Another key tip is that you want to make sure you collect and carve everything at least for the large majority of the first half of the game so then you have a lot of resources when needing to craft anything. As for when you should be upgrading your armor and weapons you should look into this whenever you hit a wall with a monster whether that's you're taking too much damage, your attacks are bouncing off the monster due to low sharpness or even both. If you are looking for armor spheres, playing the game will usually net you quite a lot but if you are wanting to target them as a reward then definitely look into doing a lot of bounties. And also do note that armor and weapons upgrade differently. Armors will upgrade with armor spheres as we just mentioned and weapons are just upgraded using materials similar to how you originally craft armor and weapons. This of course will still correlate to the given monster the weapon is made from and obviously do note that you will need materials sometimes from the open world such as ores. So this comes back into the idea of collecting and carving everything as you never know when you might need that Dragonite ore or even that hide from that herbivore so definitely take both of these into account. In addition to this you have access to a feature called SOS and this can be used to request help from other monster hunters and could help you progress a tiny bit faster. Keep in mind though this feature as well as multiplayer in general will only work in assigned quests after all the initial cutscenes before the monster encounter have been watched by the host as well as the joining player and they will have to watch these cutscenes separately. 
The final tip will be to make sure you stock up on your healing items as I do see a lot of beginner players go into a quest with like 4 potions and then only I'd say maybe 5-10 inside their item box and even then they probably forget that they can restock at the base camp and this of course just is a chain reaction effect you have hardly any potions to heal with you get hit you heal a tiny bit and then you get hit again you run out of potions and then you get hit again you're dead and then you basically have no healing for the rest of the quest and this either either leads to you abandoning or returning to the hub and obviously that's either wasting time and or it's going to be wasting your little resources that you have at the start of the game so you do want to make sure that you make good use of your money buy quite a few potions to start with just so you have something to keep you in the battle and also make good use of shock traps and pitfalls when you get to the chance to craft them as this will make it a lot easier for you to deal damage to the monster especially for the more aggressive monsters and it also gives you the option to capture the monster which will cut down a lot of your quest time and if you are struggling with uh, dealing with a specific monster for example your first Anjanath encounter which I can see quite a few players especially new players to the franchise I can see them struggling with that if you do get the monster to its critical condition which is visible on the map you will see this little skull icon coming off the monster that means it's ready to capture and it's almost dead if you do want to be safe you can capture the monster and this will avoid it killing you if you do for example have your final life it can avoid you dying in the final stages as that's happened to me a lot of times especially when I was fighting monsters like no gigante where it was literally just seconds away from dying and it will just do its dive bomb attack and it will just one shot me when I was on my final life and the monster probably had I wouldn't know but I, I assume knowing my luck it probably had like one or two slashes in it and it would have been dead but instead it killed me with a one shot move so definitely just make sure you're aware of this as it can be very beneficial to you and it will be for the entirety of your monster a journey so do keep this in mind and with that guys that does bring us to the end of this video if you did enjoy or find this helpful it would be extremely appreciated if you could just slap that like button and definitely subscribe for a lot more monster Hunter content for any veterans out there who watch this video for some reason definitely drop a comment down below as to what other tips you could give new players or returning players and for any new players to the series be sure to drop any queries that you do have about the game in the comment section and I will try to get to it as soon as possible and maybe even another veteran who is just coming along the comment section can answer it for me as well and don't forget to join our discord link is at the top of the description there's a lot of awesome hunters in there all very friendly and welcoming and if you do need someone to play with there I think there is at least a few people on every single platform for Monster Hunter World and if you're on PC I can personally help you myself if, if you need to and obviously if enough people need help I could maybe even do a live stream of sorts for Monster Hunter World on PC where I just go around helping people with various quests and various farming and just hop on and try farm a few of that specific monster but other than that guys thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye